keep you preoccupied and they're his things. They're not of God, Brother Ralph. Brother Karen, that sister Karen, they're not of God, hallelujah, but they are of the devil himself and he wants to keep everybody in the church. They want to have your minds preoccupied with everything else so you won't even think about the one who's come, my God, during this time till he was born so we can live forever. If you believe it, my God, will you shout hallelujah in this place this morning? I was at West Side. Ralph was with me. Karen was with me for a while. I'm going to slow down. I want you to hear me, okay? This guy got out of church. I'm sorry, I don't want to cry. His name was Eddie. The first time I saw him, I saw him in a store at the Easy Stop on 68 in Oak Ridge. Everybody tell you I'm a big mouth? I am. I didn't care what he thought because I, because I knew his soul was at stake and I walked, he had gotten away from God. He had gotten out of church. It wasn't the fact he was out of the building. He was away from God. And I walked in and said, Eddie, I said, I'm supposed to see you today. I said, the Lord told me to tell you you need to come home. He just kind of, you know, looked at me and kind of just, you know, see you around. And then I ran into him a second time later, months later, just run into him again. That's the second time. You know this story. And then the third time. The third time I knew that there was trouble. I knew that this was it. I knew that I knew that I knew that if he didn't get his life right, that he was heading towards destruction. And the third time I was jogging. I wasn't thinking about anything. I was running down Oak Ridge Highway. I went down the back side and down there at the stoplight on the other side of Wiggles. There's a little uh, uh, a school down there that's back behind the other school. And down there, and the Lord, and I'm running. I'm going to run not down the other way around the second school. I'm going to run up around the big school. But I'm running, and I can't see what's behind this school. And I remember God to this day. He said, son, I want you to run down behind that school. It didn't make sense to me. I thought, why? But I knew that I had to. And the closer I got to the school, the more it burned in my spirit. Anybody know who I'm talking about? That's how God does. He'll nudge you. He's nudging some of you this morning. He's nudging you to come. He's wooing you to come. He's telling you, I want you to come now. I don't want you to wait. I need you to run down behind that school. It's okay. Sweating like a dog. I done run about three miles, two and a half, three miles. I went down behind the school, and down there behind the school was a swing set, and there was Eddie with his little boy. I can see him right now. I can see his face. I can see his beard. I don't know if he thought I was arrogant. I don't know if he thought I was prideful, but I was so under the anointing, I pointed it right in his face, and I said, Eddie, this is the third time. I said, I told him the story. This is what I told you, how God said to come down. I said, I said, you better come home. I said, you better come now. This is the last time God's warning you one more time. Within a year, he was dead. He got killed in a car wreck. Somebody said that the gear shift went through him. I don't know if that's true or not. He said, why are you telling me all this, preacher? Because the next, I want you to understand that this is not a game change. You know, we can shout and we do. We see miracles and we do. We feel the anointing of God and we do. But my job is to keep you out of hell and to keep you out of the devil's grip. That's my job. The Lord said to me, He said, I want you to tell the church He wants to offer you other indulgences. That's what the devil wants to do. He offers you the world and its sin. Other things. Why? Why does He do this? Why? The main reason is to hold you in bondage. Let me talk about bondage. You mean to tell you what bondage is? The Bible talks about a spirit of bondage. We've, we've talked about it. Some of you have been around a long time. We've warred against the enemy. We've been in great revival, great moves of God. But when it comes right down to it, that's what his goal is, is to keep you in bondage. Look at this preacher. Are you in bondage today? Look up here. Are you in bondage today? What is bondage? What is really bondage? Well, what is it? Is It's sin. But it goes greater than that. Bondage is the spirit that keeps you captive to sin. It holds you there. It keeps you there. It's a spirit. They work together to hold you to that sin, to keep you a slave and a captive. And so many people, and I said it a minute ago, they have been numb from the truth. They have been brainwashed from the truth. And the freedom and the fulfillment that can only be found in Christ. It's not in the other things. It's not in other indulgences. I heard Billy Graham preach the greatest message 
about five years before he died about Belshazzar. It's on my heart. And he said, Belshazzar, you knew these things. He wrote on the wall, Mene, Mene, Tekel, ye farson, you have been weighed in the ballots and found wanting. Because you have chosen other things over God and you knew these things. You knew these things. Daniel said, you knew these things. Daniel said, give your gifts and all your rewards to another. And when you realize, and when the Satan realizes that you can't be bought, that you can't be bought by anything, that's when it really, the battle really begins. Glory be to God. Listen, He wants to keep you from that fulfillment. And every single one of you, including myself, before I ever came to Christ, I had a God-sized hole on the inside of me. And I tried to fill it up. But there's still people in the church today, they've never been born again. They've never been saved. They've never given their life to Christ. They come into the church. They write their name on the roll. But let me tell you what, the name on the roll down here is not going to get you in up there. God said in His Word, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be delivered. Now, I don't want to tell the people that are saved that you're not saved because you are saved. But I also want the people to know that are diddly dallying around and that are playing a game with the devil and living a double life and thinking they're going to go to heaven. I want to give you something today. God said to tell you that the enemy is a liar and that that will not fly in His kingdom. I want to read a little bit of word to you. Let me find it, okay? Then in the book of Luke. Now you think about this for just a minute. Jesus, we're talking about, I mean, I can only imagine what kind of preacher John the Baptist was. Are you with me? I mean, man, he was good enough. But we're talking about Jesus. And Jesus is preaching. Listen. Can you imagine what it must have been like to sit there and listen to him preach? I'm talking about the king who had the spirit without measure. Glory to God, I feel God. The third thing, I've got five because five is a number of grace. The third thing is, God said, I want you to tell them that the enemy wants to take away and steal God's word out of your heart. Luke 8 says, A sower went out to sow his seed, and as he sowed, listen, some fell by the wayside, and it was trodden down, and the fowls of the air devoured. I want to stop there for a minute. I've been thinking about this all, well, not all day, but I've been thinking about this word. Do you remember trodden down? The word trodden down? When I think about this, I think about Lot's wife. I want to show it to you how God wants you to see it. Lot's wife. Don't you know that I believe that we're about to be delivered out of Sodom? That God Himself is getting ready to come in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, with the voice of the archangel, with the shout of God and the trump of God, and He's going to come into the second heaven where the devil is and take us out of here. But there's going to be those that are going to be trodden down like Lot's wife. Because the devil stole the word from them. Listen. And when the Bible said the salt's lost its savor, it's no good, it's only what is to be what? Trodden down by men, right? Is that not what it says? That's what I want you to understand what he meant by that. That's what he meant. Lot's wife fell by the wayside. She was turned into a pillar of salt because she was no good for anything except to be trodden down. And that's what the enemy wants to do. Look at me in your life. Everybody hear this preacher. I didn't come here today to make friends with you. I didn't come here today to tickle your ears. I came here today to preach you what God would tell you. We're in a war and you've got to be ready. We're, we're up against an adversary and he's a very formidable foe. But even in the scripture, and God taught me this through prayer, he said, son, there's some things that you can't say to the devil. He said, you can't say that. I said, you've got to be kidding me. He said, no, he said, I'll show you why. He said, even Michael. He said, even Michael. Michael, the archangel, the chief prince, praise God. He's fighting for us and he's fighting for Israel. He said he didn't bring railing accusations against him. 
People didn't call the, people call him stupid, and he ain't stupid, and he ain't ignorant. He's a formidable foe. But he don't have us no more. We know his device, and we have power over him, and the power is in the name. Of, there's two, there's the greatest power you've got is to live a holy, sanctified life and love people. There's no law against that. No law. There's nothing the devil can do to touch you. The blood in the name of you. We have so many weapons. And then the second it said, and some fell upon a rock, and as soon as it was sprung up, it withered away because it lacked moisture. Then the Spirit, then Jesus said through the Holy Spirit, He said, and some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprang up with it and choked it. But then it said, others fell on good ground and sprang up and bare fruit a hundredfold. And when He had thus said this, He cried with a loud voice. And here's what He's saying to us today. He that hath ears, let him hear. And then He goes on to tell us what it was. What he was talking about. The parable is this, he said, the seed is the word of God. There's a seed that's being sown this morning in people's hearts, every one of us. There's a seed, look at me everybody. There is a seed. God's word is being sown right now, right this moment into your heart. Are you listening? Are, are, you, are, are you open? Is your ground pliable? Is your ground workable? There's a seed called the Word of God. And here's what he said, Now those by the wayside are they that hear, then cometh the devil, and take away the Word out of their hearts, lest they should believe and be saved. Listen, Jesus was preaching. Jesus Himself was preaching, and only one out of how many? Four received. Only one out of four. Then He said, They on the rock are they which when they hear receive the Word with joy, and these have no root for what... For we, while, or I'm sorry, for which for a while believe and in the time of temptation fall away. That's why I've been telling you, I know y'all think I'm crazy sometimes, that you need to get up every day, number one, you need to take communion. Number two, you need to put on the whole armor of God. And number three, you need to pray the Lord's Prayer, deliver me from evil, forgive me God and deliver me from evil. Give us this day our daily bread. God, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That's why we need to pray this prayer that we will be delivered from temptation temptation and from the evil one that's why he wants you to pray it that's why he told his disciples to pray it and then he said and they which fell among thorns are they when they have heard go forth and are choked with care well this would preach with cares and riches and the pleasures of this life I'm too busy taking a selfie I'm too busy wondering and uh, is everybody looking at me is everybody thinking about me some of you all need to get it right some of y'all need to hear what I'm telling you. Because I know the voice of God. And God is grieved because He sees the enemy playing around in your life. He said you're choked with the cares and the pleasures and the riches and bring no fruit to perfection. Do you know the number one thing that you and I are to do in this world for God is to produce? So would you get that? He told them, in the, in the, He said, multiply. 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 Oh, help me now. Multiply. God wants us to produce, not be choked. Then he said, But they that are on good ground are they which in an honest and good heart, having heard the word, keep it, which means you begin to be a doer of it. And you bring forth fruit with pain. What's quiet in here, isn't it? Listen to me. Two more. I want to thank the Lord right now. If there's ever been something He's ever said to help people, it's just, it's just these next two. If there's ever been anything that He's ever said in this church in a long time. Then He wants you to thank you have plenty of time. Plenty of time. I got time to come to Jesus. I got time. I'm going to tell you what the Lord told me that He's heard many times over His. You don't tell Him how many times He's heard these. I'm going to, I'm going to tell you exactly what He told me. Exactly. I'll give an account before God that this is exactly what He said. He said, I want you to tell Him how that I've heard so many people say, well, let me go back. He said, so many times, He said, people have had good intentions. How many times have you and I had good intentions? He said to me, people said, I will tomorrow. I'll do it. I think of all the times I've talked to, to some of my elders and some of you in the church about people and they've come up to me and said, you know, I'll see you tonight. I don't want anybody to ever say that to me ever because every time anybody's in here, somebody I've never seen ever since, ever and to this day, almost nine out of ten, nine out of ten, nine out of nine. I'll see you tonight, preacher. I'll see you in the morning. I'll see you Sunday. 
God said, I've heard them say I will tomorrow. I'll do it. I'm on, listen, I'm on my way. I'll come another time. 